If you are not legally protected in your business, you are leaving money on the table. Hey, I get it. The legal side of business can feel intimidating, but the good news is it doesn't have to be. If you want to build your business on a strong foundation, and if you want to know that your rights are protected when the unexpected happens with a client or a customer, then it's time to get legally protected. This means no more using free contracts that you downloaded off of the internet. This means partnering with a law firm that actually believes in your vision and can help you achieve it. This means legally protecting your brand so that no one can steal your good ideas. There are a lot of ways to grow and scale, but if you want to grow a strong business, it's time to get legally protected. If you're listening and resonating with this, then my signature service, The Legal Upgrade, just might be perfect for you. The Legal Upgrade is a straightforward, structured process to give your business the legal protection that it needs to thrive. Click the link in the show notes and schedule a call with me today. Hello, and welcome to the Legal Upgrade Podcast. I'm your host, licensed attorney, Christian Hammond. This podcast breaks down the legal side of business to reveal key legal strategies that can help you take your business to the next level. Please note that none of the following is legal, tax, investment, financial, or medical advice. Without further ado, let's get into the show. If you already have a trademark for your business, but you are not monetizing that trademark, you may be leaving money on the table. If you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Christian Hammond. I'm a licensed attorney based in Washington, DC, and I specialize in all things trademark and copyright law, helping business owners to get legally protected. And today I wanna talk about monetizing trademarks because a lot of business owners know that they need to monetize. uh, They know they need to get protected. They know they need to get a trademark, but business owners often stop there. They don't take that next step to monetize. And that's really a shame because wasn't the whole point of getting trademarked in the first place to be protected so that you could make money so that you could monetize what you're doing. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we're going to, and you might be thinking right now, well, aren't I already monetizing? I mean, I sell, you know, whatever your business sells, goods, services. And the answer is right now you're monetizing your, the efforts of your business. You're monetizing whatever good you sell, you're monetizing whatever service you offer, And to the extent that people like your brand and they like your reputation, sure, you're also monetizing your trademark, but why stop there? Why stop at just what your business itself can make? Why not monetize in a way that doesn't require your direct participation all the time? And the way or one way to do that is through trademark licensing. Trademark licensing is a way to make money from the actual trademark. So there's what you're doing probably right now, which is making money through the actual goods and services you're selling. But there's also a way to make money through just the trademark on its own as a standalone. And that is the work and that is the world of trademark licensing. So if you've been wanting to add a new, hey, Rosemary, if you've been wanting to add a new revenue stream to your business, maybe you've been wanting to add a new vertical, or maybe you've just been rethinking your um, rethinking your business structure or your business model, you are definitely going to want to listen to the whole topic today. And if you're taking notes, this would be a good time to break out the notebook, break out the pen. If you're looking for a title, you can simply title it Trademark Licensing. Maybe you can subtitle it um, Potential Additional Revenue Stream for the Business. And as we're talking today, feel free to comment. If you have questions, feel free to put those in the comments so that I can see those as well. 
So what is trademark licensing? Well, you actually experience trademark licensing every single day without realizing it. In fact, I'm willing to bet that you're actually surrounded by licensed trademark products without realizing it. And here's how trademark licensing usually goes down. You have a business, let's just call it business A, and they want to add a new, pro a new um, product or they want to add a new service. The only problem is they don't actually, they themselves don't have a good way to do that. It's a product they don't really manufacture. They don't have a lot of experience manufacturing it, or maybe it's a service that they've just never offered and no one on their team is really qualified or certified to offer that service. And so they want to add this new side of their business, but they don't really have the in-house capacity to do that. Meanwhile, there's another business that's called Business B, and they're already doing that. They already sell the thing. They already offer the service. They're already offering exactly what that first business wants to do. But for whatever reason, they could really use a boost from someone else's reputation. It would really help them if they could market under someone else's brand. Um, I see a question. And yes, this live will be saved. And it will also be on Spotify on the podcast. So don't worry. Um, so they're already doing the thing, but they would really benefit from someone else's reputation. And you know, it could be many different reasons. Maybe that second company is a little more new, or maybe they're actually really great at offering the thing, but they're not so great at marketing. So company A wants to offer this new product or service. Company B already offers that, um, except they could really use a boost from someone else's brand. So they strike a deal. Company A lets them use their trademark, their logo, you know, lets them market under their brand. And in exchange, company B pays them royalties, but they get to use their brand. And so that gives them a boost. And now everybody's happy. That is what trademark licensing is all about. It's about being able to add a new um, product or a new service or a new vertical to your business without directly having to do that work yourself, without directly having to manufacture something new or without directly actually having to offer that service. And so for a practical example that you've probably seen in your everyday life, think of Arm & Hammer baking soda. Raise your hand if you have ever bought Arm & Hammer baking soda. Maybe you bought it to put it in your refrigerator when your refrigerator had a bad smell. Maybe you are like me and you like to bake, so you've bought it for a baking recipe. But I'm willing to bet that pretty much everyone listening right now at one point has bought or experienced Arm & Hammer baking soda. Well, right, like most of us have. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but Arm & Hammer sells a lot of products. It's not just the baking soda. It's everything from diaper bags to air purifiers to body wash. What you probably didn't know is that many of those products are licensed products. Now, Arm & Hammer is not my client, so I don't know exactly what their deals are, but if it's licensed, it probably means that they don't directly manufacture those products. Instead, they're just letting somebody else use their logo, use their trademarks, and somebody else is making the product and they're paying royalties or whatever the fees are back to Arm & Hammer. And so this is what I mean when I say that you are actually surrounded by licensed products every single day um, without even knowing it. And so again, trademark licensing is a way to expand expand into a mar new market, expand into a new type of client, expand into a new type of product without directly having to do the work yourself. In other words, trademark licensing is monetizing your reputation. If you didn't already know, if you have a good reputation, that might be worth something. Um, and I think it's really important to point out here that having a good reputation is not the same thing as being famous. Having a good reputation is not the same thing as being famous. And I think that we all know that not everyone who is famous has a good reputation. Well, not everyone who has a good reputation is famous. 
And the world is very big, but a market is very small. If you are an artisan beer brewer, you probably know everybody else in your market, right? You know everyone else who's kind of a main player in that game. If you are, if you make curly hair products or you're like me and you consume curly hair products, you know that the market is only but so big. And you also know that the market of products that actually work is even smaller, <laughs> right? Um, and so the world may be big, but the market is small usually. And that means that you do not need to be famous to have a good reputation. You can have a good reputation in your little corner of the world, and it can still be worth monetizing. So that is what trademark licensing is. And again, thank you for those of you who are joining. Feel free to put questions in the comments um, or just feel free to say hi. Thanks for being here. So that's what trademark licensing is. Let's talk about how do you know whether or not it's right for your business. And I'm going to cover four things here. But the first thing I want to cover is, or the first thing to think about is, have you been rethinking your business model? Specifically, are you finding yourself in a place where you have all the clients you can have, or, or you have all the customers that you can have, you're busy, in fact, you're exhausted, you're feeling burnt out, but you're still not making the money you want to be making. This commonly happens in service-based businesses, especially where the business owner themselves is personally providing that service. And, and at the same time, there's actually a cap to how much a customer is willing to pay for that service. So a good example of this would be fitness classes or dance classes. There's only but so much people are willing to pay for a fitness class or a dance class. Maybe they'll pay 30 bucks a class at a, at a boutique type of gym. I'm thinking something like SoulCycle. Um, maybe up to perhaps $200 a class for private ballet instruction or a private ballroom dance class, say if they're getting married. But they're not going to pay much more than that, right? So this is an industry where the business owner is personally providing that service and there's a limit to how much your average customer is willing to pay for that service. If you're in an industry like that, sooner or later, you might run into a situation where you are fully booked. Your schedule is packed. You can't take any more clients or customers, but you're still not making the money you want to be making. And if you find yourself in that situation, you might be rethinking your business model. And if you're rethinking your business model, then trademark licensing could be a potential solution. An example of a business in the fitness space that kind of took this idea and ran with it and did very well would be Zumba. If you're not familiar with Zumba, Zumba is a dance-based workout. And what they do is they created a certification and now they license out their trademark. You can you know, get the certification, become a Zumba instructor. So they're licensing their trademark, letting other people use the Zumba name. And in exchange, those people are paying every single month for the privilege of using that name. To the tune of now having a business, Zumba, it's, it's private, it's private. We're not sure exactly how much it's worth, but it's been estimated Zumba's worth about $500 million. So Clearly a situation where trademark licensing worked out very well. And they were potentially in an industry where, again, there would be a cap to how much people are willing to pay. But by leveraging trademark licensing, they were able to adopt a very, very pro um, profitable business model. So if you're in a situation where you find yourself rethinking your business model, you're not really sure. Um, hey, Charlie. Um, if you're not really sure that this business model can take you the whole distance, then that might be a situation where trademark licensing is something to consider. Um, another area or another thing to consider when, when considering trademark licensing and whether it's right for your business would be, do you just know instinctually or do you know in your gut that you would do really well in another market, except you don't you just, you don't you yourself don't have the capacity to make that jump. Maybe it's because of where your team is at right now. Maybe it's because of where you are financially. But for whatever reason, you know 
you would kill it in a different market. But you just don't have the capacity to go there right now. That could be a situation where trademark licensing is a good option. I don't know, maybe you make ice cream and you know that your ice cream would kill if it was a candy bar, but you don't make candy bars and it's going to be too complicated and too hard to try to figure out how to make ice cream and candy bars in the same factory. So it doesn't make sense. So that can be a situation where trademark licensing might be something to consider. Another consideration is, do you have a, do you, is there a business you can partner with that you actually trust? Because we're talking about trademark licensing. So we're talking about giving someone else the right to use your brand. So that sh that's a, such a, a decision not to take lightly. And this is where it's really important to be working with a good trademark attorney so they can help you do your due diligence. They can help you figure out, okay, this other business is um, making a lot of great promises and it all sounds really good, but can they actually deliver at the level, at the quality, at the care, with the standard of ethics that you would expect and require for someone using your brand? That's when it's really important to be partnered with the right lawyer and law firm to help you figure that out. And then lastly, the last consideration is, have you built a brand that someone else is willing to pay for? And again, this does not mean your brand needs to be famous or that you need to have a super shiny thing that you're selling. Again, a company like Arm & Hammer is killing it on the trademark licensing scene. And at its core, it's a very simple, it doesn't get much more simple than baking soda. But if that baking soda didn't work, if you put it in your muffins and your muffins didn't rise, if you put it in your fridge and it didn't get rid of the bad odor, well, then that brand wouldn't be worth much. And so whether you've built a brand that someone else is willing to pay for, it's not a question of fame. It's a question of quality. Have you created something that is quality? Because if there's quality there, then there just might be a monetization opportunity there as well. So thank you so much for joining. That is what I have for you guys today on the topic of trademark licensing. And um, hopefully this is stirring up some thoughts, maybe even a brainstorming session for you and your team later this month as, you're, as you have been considering adding a new revenue stream, or as you have been rethinking your business model, or maybe nothing is wrong, maybe things are going really great, but again, you just know in, instinctually that you would do really well in another market. So hopefully this has been great information, and again, maybe it'll be fodder for a brainstorming session for you and your team. Thanks for being here. See you guys next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. The Legal Upgrade podcast is a Bevel Law production. For more information about The Legal Upgrade, you can follow on Instagram at Bevel Law or find even more information on the website bevellaw.com. If you enjoyed the episode, please remember to subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. See you next time on The Legal Upgrade podcast.